then my your router, router my, my router is deploying it but the next hop that I would go through is not so I, instead of keeping just one entry in my table because this is just my default route and this is always I have to go through it I don't have any other way but instead of just keeping this one I have to maintain information about dr other routes because other routers that are farther that two hops away from me because I mean, and this will increase my table size, right? Yes. So, so far what I have told you is, uh, according to what I have told you, <coughs> the tables of edge routers that usually just contain a, a few entries and a default entry, that will explode. As in, your tables would be the size of a core router, 200,000 entries, which isn't prohibitive, but we would like for that not to happen, and I'll discuss that in a little bit. Does that answer your question? So think of this as what, what I've told you right now in the worst case scenario gives your router 200,000 entries to look at when it's making forwarding decisions. That's the worst case scenario. Right, right? Right. In fact, uh, the, the last uh, study that uh, looked at the BGP table routing, size, uh, routing table sizes, the FIBs, uh, <coughs> said it was about 180,000 entries. So it's not that big a deal. However, we would like to avoid that overhead if possible. And remember that this is only a concern for the routers very close to you. The routers that are farther away, which is the backbone routers, they are already maintaining information about every uh, network prefix. So they are, all they are doing is really keeping an extra bit and a marking. That's all. But for edge routers, this could be an issue if their lookup isn't fast enough. But really think about it. The, the fast routers, the the multi-gigabit per second routers are the backbone routers, and they have to be because they are aggregating traffic from all sides. Your router, which is the edge router, is a much cheaper, you know, maybe $20,000 router as against the half a million dollar router that the core router would be. It's much cheaper, but if memory is not an issue, you're, you're keeping this larger size table, let's say 200,000 entries. But lookup isn't going to be such a big deal because you're also not getting traffic from uh, thousands of other sources, right? So you're not getting a gigabit. You don't have to route at gigabit per second speeds. So if you can save, uh, you can say, uh, you, if you can just have extra entries, your lookup will be slower, but at the same time, uh, you, don't, you, don't, you won't be dropping packets or anything. But we would like to uh, reduce that overhead as much as possible. So the point is, because BGP route announcements are supp suppressed and there is asymmetry in the internet, which means that you would see uh, a route announcement comes a certain way and that tells you that to reach me, you can use that route. However, that doesn't mean that they will send you packets from that route using the same route, right? So this could be, let's say this is your topology. <coughs> a route announcement is generated from here, and it takes this path to tell this router that to get to me, you can take this path, right? So when this router sends the packet, it will send packets this way. And that's all the BGP announcement is trying to tell you. However, this announcement doesn't say anything about how this network will send packets. So this network, so this is the announcement, and this is the actual packet. The packet could traverse this way, right? The route announcements traverse this way, which means if you are sending any data to them, if this router is sending any data to them, it will take that path. But the route announcement says nothing about how the announcer may send data, which means your route announcement, your information that you keep in your table based on BGP route announcements may be wrong. Does that make sense? Is it intuitive? One is you may not, as an, as an edge router, you may not see the announcement. And I see that as a bigger problem than the size of the table. The second is, you see announcement for a destination, 
However, that announcement says how you may send packets to me. It says nothing about how I may send packets to you. So the classic problem of internet asymmetry basically prevents you from learning these markings and storing in your table. Is that clear? To get around that problem where your markings are incorrect and you don't even know about it, right? How, in what cases would you not know about it? So here's another case. You have this asymmetry. However, uh, sorry, this router under consideration is this one. It sends packets this way and it receives packets this way. And let's say these are the deploying routers. And they use all, all use different markings. So when the packet, when the announcement comes, this is the marking it would learn. But when the packet comes, this is the marking it would contain. However, at this router, you don't even know that the asymmetry exists because as far as you are concerned, the packets are going out this way and coming this way. So there are two problems. One, your route announcements may get completely suppressed. Two, you may learn incorrect markings for your neighboring deploying routers, but you may not be topologically situated to actually find out that they are uh, not doing it, that the marking you learned is wrong. So bottom line, even though when you have it, BGP is good. When you don't have it, you, you need some other mechanism. And these two mechanisms, the recursive router challenges and host probing, accomplish just that. So I think I already talked about BGP route announcements. So let <coughs> me now talk about what recursive router challenges. <coughs> Essentially, when a router receives a marking, it doesn't know. It, it consults its pack. It gets a packet. It does a lookup in its forwarding information base on the source address. And the packet marking contained in the packet isn't the marking it has stored for that source IP address, for the source prefix. Then it cannot, based on the information we have so far from BGP route announcements, it cannot rule out that the packet is necessarily spoofed. Right? Because this marking could be incorrect due to simply due to asymmetry. In which case, it needs to issue a challenge to learn the marking actively. No, I'm not able to figure out if that point uh, made it to you or not. How much more time do we have? We should end, right? So. So let me, uh, let me not go into the details of these techniques because we are out of time. I hope what I have, uh, what I have tried to, what I have managed to communicate to you is, uh, one, what IP spoofing is, how it is a problem, how it can be used to launch denial of service attacks, but pre prevention of this would cure or would curtail a lot of denial of service attacks, but not all types. And Routers can actually prevent IP spoofing by simple extensions to the routing table that they're using. However, how you enhance the routing table to incorporate this extra information is the basic question. The first way you could do, and that's the simplest and least overhead way, is to use BGP route announcements. However, BGP route announcements are very good for doing deployment status because when you have a destination IP address, you send it that way, and the asymmetry problem doesn't arise in the announcement for deployment status. However, the routers may learn incorrect, router, uh, incorrect markings simply due to asymmetry in the internet. And depending on their, depending on where the, how far the asymmetry is from them, they may not learn the, and they may not even know that the marking they have stored is incorrect. Right? So there are other approaches that one could use to ensure that the markings you, ha you store are actually genuine. And this, the basic idea of this approach is to issue a challenge to the router until you and, and get a reply from the router so it would contain a marking that was contained in the packet you store.